You see, this is the seat of uh, history in Middlesbrough. It's the last residential ba ba bastion of uh, Middlesbrough. And the people are very loyal to it. see some footage from Teesside University, some archive footage, and I was looking at it and I was really interested in how planning decisions really affect people's lives. I run a group called Hands on Middlesbrough and we were looking at a lot of development that was going on in, in Middlesbrough and the idea of building a community. So we set up a group, uh, the Cannon Street Revisited Volunteers, and we, we wondered how we could maybe get people together and uh, get them sharing their memories and their experiences of Cannon Street. There's a lot of misconception that it was a, a rough area. That's false. That's false. It was a poor area, but the people were, I don't know, everyone I know worked. And you had to have respect for your elders. You were taught that. I wouldn't have dared call my father's friends by the first name. It would be Mr. or Mrs. Like I say to people, this is not the world I grew up in. And I said to him, the same question you've asked me, what do you miss about Cannon Street? And he was quite a humorous man when he said, yeah, well, I miss waking up in the morning and listening to the sparrows coughing, sitting of an evening and watching the gas tanks setting in the sun, you know, that was his memory of it. When I was at school in the, in the sixth form, I spent a couple of days filming uh, just the street scenes. It, uh, became quite clear that this had been a really very special place and you thought what a tragedy that this is in another year or two will cease to exist. So much of the town's past has just gone, there's been no record of it at all and I think one of the good things about this project is that you make an effort to capture some of it because a lot of the people who grew up there aren't with us anymore and if you can you know generate even a, a smidgen of the history that was there and uncover some you know, photos of the area, the streets, you know, all that kind of thing. A really, really important thing to do. One of the main reasons I'm here is we have some photographs. Childers Street won the middle of the country won a best of street competition for the Queen's coronation June 1953. And Childers Street came first in that. There was a lad in the street, he was a joiner, he erected all the trellises. We had the best, she must have been 2,000 paper flowers to put round. And on the day of the duty, Peter Oliver was a local fruit uh, who got in his lobby and he went out to the moors and collected fair at six o'clock in the morning so they could bring it down so it would be fresh. So we had an event in 2015 at Teesside University where we showed the archive footage and we showed um, some photographs and some other footage that we'd got of Cannon Street area and just the conversations people were having at the actual event and you could see that they really wanted to talk to each other. They were watching the films but they were like looking behind and sort of talking to, oh were you from so and so street and you know it was just really nice atmosphere and I thought oh we're onto something here. Wouldn't it be great if we could just keep this going and, and allow people to make connections with each other and share stories with each other. I remember one time there was a, a, an open piece of land between Cooper Street and the, the Bridge Approach Road, which we called Cooper Common, but other people had different names for it. And we were building a bonfire there, and I'd be about seven or eight, and the other lad said, right, you, you guard the bonfire in case the fox headers come and went off and left me and I'm standing there. If the fox headers, <laughs> I'll tell you now, if the fox headers had come out of and across the Newport Bridge on the other side of the river, you know, unfortunately they didn't turn up. Each street had a gang, so yeah. we'd go and chase next door but one street, so we'd get the bin lids and the sweeping brushes and we'd bang on them and we'd go up to the top of their street and do it to frighten them and then yeah, they would chased. come out with theirs and chase us back to where was it. Nobody got hit or anything or hurt, it was just the way that we always used to have fun. My granddad got caught apparently. In them days they took him to the town hall and my nana went down to get him and I think she had to pay two and six or something like that to get him out there, there was all the hell. That's true, yeah, you yeah. stayed well clear of the bobbies, stayed even well. if you hadn't done anything wrong. Stayed, stayed <laughs> well the Newport Bridge was an adventure playground for us. We used to play on it, climb on it, and uh, a fella used to come and chase us, called him the bridge guy. Watch out the bridge guy, she's coming, you know, and we'd all run. Um, we could stand there and watch the ships go, you know, and we, 
played on the where Billingham Beck comes in. We used to play there. It was a bit of a playground for young people, and uh, there was a lot of a lot of uh, children actually playing in the ruins and the the derelict houses. There's a, a picture I took of a family group uh, walking across some wasteland with. Uh, near the gas works, near the gasometer, which was uh, one of the key images. And I often wondered what happened to those children. They must have been about 10, 9 years old, I think brother and sister. We've persuaded a lot of people that the photographs they think that aren't important are probably even more important than the ones that's in the museum or the archives or the local library. And that's been proven in the fact that three or four of the photographs that have come in nobody's ever seen before in sort of 30, 40 years research in local history. One particular one that was really of interest to me was the Newport Ironworks brass band from the 1890s that a lady had in her mother's cupboard and nobody would seen it before and I've never seen it before and there were something like 50 people on it all in uniforms and they were that proud of the fact the photographer was coming to photograph the band from the works. They've actually painted on a tarpaulin the name of the company and the date. We're building up really a database, a digital database, to try and build up as much information about that area and people's memories of that area as possible. The lady said, I've got a photograph. It's my mother and my grandmother at Saltburn on holiday, sitting in a deck chair on the beach. So I think it's very important, she said. We said, oh, we'll bring it in and let's have a look. When she brought it in, it's not just got the people in the deck chair, Behind it is a group of nuns with a school party walking behind them in the deck chair. And then further on the right hand side of the picture is a huge great aeroplane, a biplane from just after World War I, flying across the photograph. We went to one of the sessions at St Columbus and showed this photograph. Another lady came and said to us, I used to work at the aerodrome at Musk. I used to be a secretary. She said, and I went out with one of the airmen. And she said, that's what they used to do as a treat. At lunchtime, they would take you up for a spin in the aeroplane and have a look around. So that told a brilliant story just for that one little photograph the lady had that belonged to her grandmother and her mother. Well, it was such a, a close community, like, you know, everybody everybody knew everybody, whether you had anything or, or you didn't, and most of us didn't. See, they, what they've done down here, these town planners, is to really wrench a life and uh, wonderful community and scattered it to the four corners of Middlesbrough. We have a very simple house down there. We don't know the bathroom, but there's never a bathroom. There's a bath, and then you used to bring more one was a town with the pajamas, and the, I was the bathroom, and I used to shout out the window, another one. Anybody having a baby or anybody dying, Janie Bond used to come. They used to say she lays you, she brings him into the well, she lays them out when they're going out the well, you know. That's what they've done in them days, you know. You're having a baby, somebody come in and help you to deliver it, and when they died, she used to go and lay them out. It was all done by people, and it was more communal, you know, everybody, they'd have a whip round it, you know, to get a reef or something like that. It was so, I mean, it, the community was just more, people didn't have a lot, but even if they didn't have a lot, they'd, they'd give what they had. Of all the pictures, I think this one of um, the woman with the dog is my favourite. It was very, very typical of, of this this community in a way. She was there standing for a reason, she's obviously looking down the street, and in fact she's waiting for somebody, she's waiting for a neighbour whose dog she's minding, she's minding the neighbour's dog. At the end of the street the, 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 the houses were being boarded up, so you realise they didn't have very long to, uh, to be there, and you thought, well how sad, these are very solid neighbours, very supportive of each other, and they'll be dispersed and uh, that will all end. So it was nice to capture something of that kind of community spirit. They want to be down here where they were uh, at home, uh, where they were all friendly, they all knew each other, uh, where there were little corner shops and uh, plenty of pubs. <laughs> so all the people who've got photographs can actually bring these things in and it's not what they remember. It's what it prompts in other people to remember, or what the historians know, or what people know from the local area. You had 60 businesses. You could have bought anything. Now you have to go out of town to all of these blinking supermarkets and all these massive shopping centres, and then it takes you an hour to get out. Whereas there, you could have just walked along the street without any problem, and you could have got any, anything that you wanted. Hopkinson's, the butchers, Flanagan's, which was a, a second-hand 
clothes shop were there. When you get by there, there was smart toy shop where you'd look in, oh, look at this, look at that, and all the latest toys. Another shop that was just called, called the back, it was called the backy shop. We used to sell the little penny, penny slices and things like that. Bowman Street shop, we had Ashton's fish shop. Harry Crow's, my ma said, there's three shilling, go to Harry Crow's, ask him for a sheep's head and ask him to leave the legs on. <laughs> When we went to the shops, we went to Jackie Nags' shop in Cannon Street and he had all the old-fashioned tins with the glass lids on the top and then coffee in a sack and that sort of stuff. So all the things that people had were there in front of you. So all those smells were there when you went into the shop. And if we went in for something, we would be treated to a broken biscuit. Mr Nags would let you have a broken biscuit. The pawn shop on the corner of Rockliffe Street. And my friends there, Dad's suit went in on a Monday, but they had to be back out again for Friday. Yeah, for the week for the weekend. Weekend. <laughs> It's like a jigsaw, all the people's memories joined together to create one big brain that creates this huge, great community memory of what things were like. Some of the photographs we, we've seen, they're just fantastic and really give an insight into what life was like, but also give an insight into what a community's like, because I think we've, we've kind of lost that a little bit now and, and people are often searching for these connections with others, but often communities feel quite fractured and looking at the past can sometimes inform the future and how maybe how we need to go to take some of those aspects of places like Cannon Street to help our communities flourish now. Planners believed that you could actually build communities, that you could build an estate or a, a very nice plan, you know, master plan, and it, it would be a community. And it's not really True. And you know, you look at somewhere like, like Newport and Cannon Street and you realise you know, it takes a long time for a, for a community to, to build up and you can't really replace it, you can't just move people and, and expect a community to, to, to immediately start. Yes, because I think it's people that matter, it's neighbours that matter. I know everybody. I live this, I've lived in where I am now for 23 years, I know four people. There are no neighbours now that uh, live next door and they've never spoke to them. I don't know how that could, that could, that, that would never be like, you know what I mean? They're always in, in and out of one another's homes or what they call they, you know. Or if anybody was sick, they'd be there, like, you know. Anything you want, can I go a message for you or what, what have you, like, you know. All of the people who actually lived there, if you, if you take St. Saint, Saint School as an example, there's a photograph of the boxing team, there's 12 laddies on it. All those 12 laddies are still friends. The football team has 18 laddies on. All the 18 laddies are still friends. And you think, well, blink and heck, that was 60 years ago. You did, you just knew them to everyone, from the tots to the elder, elder people, yeah. That's what I miss. A highlight for me with this project has been personal because I've met family members that I didn't know I had that are linked with George McNeil, my granddad, and my family from Cannon Street. And people that have been doing their family history have got in contact with me and said, uh, oh, you know, we're related. And then they've, they've sent me all these photographs. And I, I felt very connected to the area, which for a lot, long time growing up, I didn't quite feel that I fit in anywhere and this project has really done a lot for me understanding my family history and, and feeling proud to be from Middlesbrough and have family from the Cannon Street area. There was something very special about Cannon Street. People's own snapshots, own uh, albums and memorabilia which has been which has come to the fore, will be given a context. People have got their memories as well. What inspired me most of all was having the film screened at the university uh, at Scarlett's event and I was really taken aback at how many people had turned up. There was hundreds and they all had their photographs and so this um, this bit of oral history is going to be quite important I think. Sundays used to have pigeon tuskles, they used to be throwing coins up the corner of the street. You know when you used to go in, it's a disappear in seconds. About 50 or 60 men disappear in seconds. I remember there was a very famous bakery in uh, middle Jackson's, the bakery, and that come full of bobbies. <laughs> they didn't know what they call it. Come off Newport Road down the High Lord Street. Of course, the, the gambling school is just at the top of Low Lord Street outside the Cannon, and then the shutters went up on the back of the lorry, and all the boys in blue all bailed out. <laughs> You're nicked. 
You know, they'd be up the next morning. Pika was the uh, Sipendi magistrate in them days. Fine two pound. We'd be back again the next Sunday, yeah. As a kid, I was in a swing, a canvas swing on the backyard door. And they were playing pitch and toss at the bottom. There was a gap between Sever Street and Croft Street. And they were playing pitch and toss. And the police raided it. Our backyard door was open. This man came running up ran into our backyard, sent me flying out the swing, and then he hid in our outside lavatory. The policeman came running after him, and my grandmother wouldn't let him in. The dog was barking at the lavatory, so the policeman knew there was somebody in there. She wouldn't let him in at all. Go away and get a search warrant, and then you can, so he gave up and went away, and this man came out and said to me, said to me oh, thanks a lot, missus, so then she, smacked him about the head and threw him out the front door. That's for knocking the bairn out of the swing, you know. That was the sort of people you had. Wonderful people, wonderful characters. There's such a wealth of information out there and it can only be found if people tell us about it and, and the games people used to play and the activities they used to go, like the, go out with the working men's club or the, the box the amateur boxing or the football clubs. We used to tie the ropes around the, you know, the big lamp posts and just swing out and we used to just do that for hours. We treated it as a playground. You could actually see the roads where the street, where the houses used to be. Well, what they've done, they took the staircases off and we used to still climb up on the, on the verandas and that and use ties and ropes and swing about and that. And I was buying shoelaces, you know, for the whip and top and used to colour them in with chalk. Some of the care homes we went into, particularly one, I can remember, I think it was Cleveland View Care Home, and there was a lady with dementia, and she didn't really engage in a lot of conversations with people. Uh, but you got her talking about Cannon Street, and she just wouldn't shut up. She was having a great time, so that was nice as well, uh, allowing people that opportunity to recall their memories and giving them a value. The processions were marvellous. Absolutely marvellous during the Catholic Church with the Corpus Christi. And people would come out in their own bridge and follow it from St Patrick's over the border into the um, into the marketplace. When you went, they'd, they'd give you the stamp. And if you didn't have that stamp to show your, your parents, you know, when you got back, they'd say you'd have them paying. So then what we used to do, we used to make our own stamps and stamp them out so that we didn't have to go. Things that people used to do then, it is a um, essential part of Middlesbrough and that's why it needs to be remembered in as much detail as possible and celebrated as well. Everybody, the people who've been here today with all the photos, all the memories, you just got to listen to them talk. They're all in the 70s, 80s and yet they're as sharp as anything with the memories. So to have the memories like that, the place must have been good, a really good community. There's no community spirit there. People aren't together, they're all separated. Whereas in Cannon Street, we used to be a happy family here. We lived in a world of our own. Draws tested vision from gathered crowds. It was all calls and whispers, leave a gas. You were reminiscing its glorious past. I'm really thankful that we've managed to get a really good team of volunteers, local historians, people that are volunteering their time going into the care homes and showing the the display boards and lots of people working behind the scenes putting content onto the archive and it's the the people on the Facebook page I mean they're absolutely amazing the, the amount of content that they share it, it's just we're so grateful for because there wouldn't really be a project without the actual residents uh, getting in touch um, posting their photographs and sharing the memories, sending me sometimes handwritten letters through the post, you know, and, say, and I receive it and it's like, oh, it feels like Christmas because I've got this, this handwritten note from somebody who's took all that time to tell me what it was like growing up on, on Cannon Street. I just think it's a valuable project and the Facebook page will still keep going, the archive will still be continuing. People will continue those connections. A lot of people, when they see what's happening, they just start crying because they remember what they say, the good old days, what's the worst. The Scarlet Sight is, it's not just Cannon Street Revisited, it's Cannon Street Reunited. We're finding a lot of people that we knew, or I didn't know you, but oh, I remember your brother, or I remember your uncle, or whatever, you know. We, we, we do have a sense of belonging there. In the future, people will have this record that we've created now of what life was like a hundred years ago. 
So in another hundred years, this information will all be there to add to what we've already got in that wealth of memory, either recorded in people talking, in the photographs that we've scanned, or the archive that we've created. I'm standing on the rubble of what was once a lovely, friendly uh, parish, which I've been extremely happy in. Oh no, happy, happy memories like of uh, Cannon Street. Ye old Cannon Street. <laughs>